Let's work a little bit on turns on forehand. At first, when we're learning this, you're going to find with the green horses, so much of the time, people want to use one side of their body. And it's easy for the horse to understand. So like my horse, he's not used to this anymore. But what happens is people say, okay, I'm going to move the hindquarters. And they look at the hindquarters like this. And they say, I want to move the rear. And they sit real awkward like. I used to do that. The thing about it is you're contorted. You're not in position. And the other thing is when a horse doesn't understand and they're learning for the first time, we use what we call lateral aids. I might use my right leg and right rein. Lateral means to the side. So what I'm doing is I'm using all right side here. So I'm using my, my right rein and my right leg. Or I'm using my left rein and my left leg. Now this is simple, elementary, and there's a time we all want to refine our riding. And the sooner we stop bending their head around so far, the sooner he can lift and flex and elevate. So over time, I start to do things with him a little straighter. So as I go forward and I start to feel his rib cage swinging from side to side like a bell, swinging and swinging. The ribs swing, the head and neck swing, the legs swing, sometimes the tail swings. Every body part of your horse swings. Maybe not the eyeballs, but they should be moving around a little too. But everything swings. So I get in time with the swing. So if I feel his ribs starting to swing to the left, well, I just use a little right leg and I just pick up on my left rein and there it is. There it is. He knows how to do this. Your horse does too. But when you overbend them and you take their head so far to the side, it takes their shoulder out. So bending a horse is any time their jowl or their jaw goes past the width of their neck. So if my horse, if his neck, say, is nine inches wide, if his jaw goes past that neck, it's a bend. That's a bend. A bend is more. Flexion, flexing a horse, is less. Flexing a horse is when they roll their jaw. And flexion comes from the first cervical vertebrae, not the pole. Everybody likes to say that they flex from the pole. The pole just happens to be the higher part of the head. That's why it's called the pole. But flexion comes from that first cervical vertebrae. And when they flex, they roll the jowl. They roll the jowl. And so you get more vertical aspect to that. So a flexion is less. And flexion gets your horse light in the shoulder. Bending puts them heavy on the shoulder because their head is so far to the side. So bending is a good way to get your horse weighting the shoulder. If your horse rears up, you want to bend them, right? I mean, that's an option. If your horse takes off, we learn to bend our horses. But see, that puts them heavy on the shoulder because their head weighs a lot. And if his head goes, three, you know, goes a foot to the left, he's got to balance it out with the shoulder to the right. He's got to counterbalance. So as we ride, think about a train on train tracks. So if I ride straight, the tracks go straight. I keep them centered between my reins and my legs on the tracks. And now I'm going to visualize the tracks turning to the right. So I want to bend just enough. Sometimes I still bend too much. I j I'll tell you. But I want to bend enough, just enough, just enough. So if my tracks come to the left, I come to the left. Think of a cattle chute. Think of having round pen panels on both sides of me. And pretend those round pen panels go straight. And I'm going straight between the panels. If he starts to push on the left panel, what would happen? He'd run into it. Well, that's my rein and leg. He runs into my rein and leg. If he started to veer to the right, he runs into the right panel. Well, that's my right rein and my right leg. Pretend the panels, the chute, curves left. 
I want to keep them right in the middle of the panels. Now your reins and your legs are the panels. My right side and my left side, I'm setting those parameters, those zones that he stays between. So that's pretty handy when it comes to turning. We don't want to twist our body. I just want to look over his ears. If I'm making a right turn, I have my eyes open and soft, and I look over his right ear. If I go straight, I want to look over the pole. I want to go straight, look over the pole. If I ride left, I just look over that left ear a little bit. So I'm looking right over the ear. Same thing at the canter here. Looking over the ears. If I start twisting in, he starts falling out. See, if I do this, if there's a cone and I'm looking at the cone, riders do this and their horse goes out. So we don't want to do that. I want to look to the in, I want to look right over the ears just like this. My shoulders match the angle of his shoulders, which is the same angle as his hips. See? So I want my shoulders square when we're straight, perpendicular when we're straight. I want my headlight and my shoulders coming a little bit to the left. So my shoulders and my hips would be square with his shoulders and his hips. So much of the time, we've heard exaggerate to teach, refine as you go. That's true, but don't forget the refinement part. Because a lot of us have exaggerated to teach because as people we learn through exaggeration. Horses sometimes learn through exaggeration. But what happens is that becomes habits. That becomes habitual. So if I'm always twisting to turn, if I'm always using an inside rein, a so-called plow rein or direct rein my horse, so I'm always turning off the inside rein, plow reining, plow reining, what's going to happen soon is I'm out of position. I'm overdoing it. I'm doing too much. Less is more with our horses.